Welcome to the Social Hour Podcast, a podcast for SOAS by SOAS. I'm Bethany. And I'm Ashley. And in today's episode, we are going to be doing a little introduction. And you're just going to meet me and Bethany. Yeah. We're excited. It's our first yeah. episode. This is, I'm so <laughs> proud of us. Can I just say that I'm proud of us? Because this is a big leap of faith. Like, <laughs> and out of our comfort zones a little bit. To totally. Do this. So... Super but, nervous. You know, it just was kind of meant to be. It really like, was. Totally meant to be. It was we're divine excited. intervention. Yeah. And actually, we're going to talk about that divine intervention in our second episode with this mm -hmm. special guest who actually is the reason Ashley and I got connected through social media to begin with. So I think we should just kind of dive into introducing ourselves to our audience and let everybody kind of know who we are, our backgrounds with sewing. And then we have some really fun questions that I think will help you guys kind of get to know who we are as sewists and crafters and, and just people. Mm -hmm. So actually I'll let you go first. Do you want to introduce yourself? Kind of give them a little background on who you are, socials, all that fun stuff. And of course we'll link everything in the description. Sure. Of course. So my name is Ashley and I am the creator of Charmed by Ashley over on YouTube. So I've been sewing online for probably about uh, 11 years now. Um, <clears throat> I make sewing patterns for the community because I feel like, you know, sewing is such an expensive hobby and I really wanted to be the person to give a little bit of, you know, a little leg up. So I make sewing patterns for free over on my YouTube channel. And then I have a blog, which is charmedbyashley.com. Um, and of course, all my social medias, which will be linked in the show notes. But uh, yeah, that's just what I do. I just love to make sewing tutorials to help other people learn how to sew. And I think that's what brought us together is our passion for teaching. Totally. So that's awesome. Okay. So I'll kind of give my background and then we'll kind of dive into like our families a little bit. Yes. Um, so I, <clears throat> you can find me on social media as craft with Bethany. So Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, kind of everywhere, just like Ashley is. And, um, you know, again, I started that just to be able to share my passion and love for not just sewing. I actually do like every type of crafting there is. And so, you know, I kind of grew up with very crafty parents. My mom was a sewist. My dad was a woodworker. I kind of do both. And my fiance does woodworking. So it's just kind of like part of our family. And um, so I've been doing that for a while, but my full-time job is I'm an educator for Singer Sewing Company. So I work for the com an umbrella company, essentially, that owns Singer Sewing brand, as well as Husqvarna Viking and Foff. And I'm a part of the education team. And there's a group of us that do education for each brand. And I'm focused on the Singer brand. So you can also find me on Singer social media with Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram doing lives. I do projects every month. Um, that are free on singer.com and you'll also find me doing live zoom classes and stuff with like michael's craft store so just kind of like anywhere i can like sew and craft and teach people <laughs> how to do all of those things it's just it's just my joy it mm -hmm. really is what fills my cup every day so you know i literally spend like 90 percent of my day in my sewing room and I do a lot of time here in my home studio for, for work with filming tutorials and fun stuff. And now I'm podcasting. I so know. Exciting. <laughs> like I needed to add something else to my plate. Like everybody's <laughs> like, you're so busy. Oh, yeah. You always sew. You're always crafting. <clears throat> and mm -hmm. I am, but I just, I can't stop. I just no. can't. Can't so, stop, won't stop. <laughs> I can't stop. Uh-uh. No, no it's, just, <laughs> it's just who I am as a person. Yeah. Um, it's all I've ever known. And I, I can't imagine doing anything else. I, I started sewing when I was around seven or eight, showing an interest in it because my mom sewed and she yeah. made all of her clothes growing up. Mm -hmm. And then um, I started, I remember like making like little felt outfits for my draw, uh, my trolls and Barbies, like I, especially my troll dolls. I love to make little like shirts for them and stuff. Um, and so I started getting into that that way. And then I took, lessons, sewing lessons at a place here in Nashville. Um, 
called Dancing Needles, which is not around anymore, sadly. Um, but it was the place to go to buy fabrics and shop for machines. It was like a little quilt shop. But they also taught sewing classes and they would teach kids sewing classes. And I remember going to it. I was nine years old. I made like my first outfit. I still have it to this day. Wow. If you want to see it, it's on my socials. But I'll have to <laughs> post it, um, a picture of it to our social hour, social media podcast channels because it was it's it's like a little baseball style tee that buttons down it was like all patriotic fabrics had a little elastic waist shorts with pockets and um it even had like applique on it it was like full buttons it had a pocket had embroidery on it with my monogram like I, we did all the things and it was ended up being selected to be in a fashion show what I, you know, that someone else wore in a fashion show. I was so proud of it. What? Still hold on to it. I know. And That's I like, crazy. it just like lit a fire in me. Yeah. And, you know, I've, I've been sewing off and on ever since then. So about 30 years now, Yeah, uh, which is crazy to say. It is. Me too. It That's exactly shows it. 30 years. We're the same age. So yeah, it's just <laughs> a little bit. But it's yeah. okay. I have no shame in that. Um, but I just, it's just something that I've always loved doing. Mm -hmm. Has it always been my career? No. Um, but it is now. And I'm so grateful. It's it's definitely, and I tell people this, um, <clears throat> and I told this to my, my boss because she was, you know, after I've been with the company for a year, they're like, just, how are you liking it? Like all those kind of things. They just want to like get to know how you're feeling about it. And I'm like, you're going to have to like kick me out, like, like <laughs> forcefully kicking and scraping. I'm, you're not going to be able to get rid of me. I love my job. It's just a rare opportunity when oh, yeah. passion and like career get to align. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it was, you know, I was in my late thirties when I took a huge career shift mm -hmm. I've been doing 10 years before and it was a big risk, but it, I couldn't say no to the opportunity. Oh gosh. And no. I knew it would never present itself again. So I mm -hmm. had to jump on it and it's been absolutely worth it. Because if I hadn't, I wouldn't have probably crossed paths with you and we wouldn't be here today. Mm -hmm. it's just divine intervention, as we were talking about earlier. Yeah, I started. Right, so, um, oh, sorry. I was going to go. No, go ahead. Yeah, go for it. Okay. So, yeah, I started sewing when I was like seven or eight as well. I don't really remember, but my mom was a seamstress. Um, so her specialty was making clothes and she is absolutely like, she can make a wedding dress. She is just wow. so, and I wish she still did, but she doesn't actually <laughs> anymore, but she made, um, very like Victorian style, um, dresses for me, my sister to wow. wear for like you know, portraits, we would go get like a professional portrait session done. And there'd be like us in, in the window with our beautiful <laughs> lacy, just gorgeous dresses. She just was really an inspiration um, for me to be able to, you know, be able to be that good. I not quite that good, but um, <laughs> I do, I do strive for perfection like she does. Um, yeah. But other than that, like we would always just take trips to the crafting store. We had a white rose, which was down the street from us. And um, she was very random though, just like I am. I'm really random when it comes to my crafts. So we would just go there and just like look for things, you know, whether it was uh, flowers, you know, dried flowers and just whatever. Whatever oh, inspired you. <clears throat> yeah. Plastic canvas. I used to make a lot of things for Barbies and stuff like that. Like the furniture. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. A lot of I had different... the whole dollhouse and everything. So we would yeah. make I would make stuff with my dad for it. I'd make stuff with my mom for yeah. it. Just Kleenex like, like box covers, up. you know, the whole thing. So, um yes. but but then as I got older, I kind of put it down. Um, mm -hmm. But then when, of course, when I had my kids, that's when it was like, okay, I really wanted these nursery items. And then I'm yeah. kind of cheap. So I would be <laughs> like, you know what? I'm going to make those. So I made like bumper pads and um, changing pad covers and just all yeah. the things, you know, and then made them custom, made my son's room all like dinosaur themed and oh, went to it. Joe Williams and picked out all the fabric and stuff. So I'm um, really being able to do something like that and customize it. And then it's kind of also a gift to him. Hopefully yeah. maybe one day he'll, you know, <laughs> So you kept it children's. Oh, for sure. Are you crazy? You can't give that <laughs> stuff away. You got to keep it until the moths eat it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny you say that. I didn't make stuff for my son. I just, I was working like, 
I'm a mm. single mom. I'm working like two, three jobs. Like I'm working all the time. I'm just like trying to survive. I was 21 when I had my son and he's now 16. So you guys can do the math there. I, I'm old. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I feel it sometimes though. Anyways, um, I, I didn't make stuff for him. I just didn't have time to. And so my mom did. And my mom's in like sewing groups and a quilt guild and all of this stuff. So I, my mom made all of his bumper pads. She made the Aww. curtains. She did all of that. And everything was like blue and green color. And it was turtles. So everything was like the cutest little turtles. And I still have a lot of it. Um, and she even made like a quilt to match. And then all of her friends made quilts. So I have a box of quilts. Wow. That's so from special. when he was born and it is special. And I still know all these ladies, they still like sew and quilt and they'll probably tune in and listen to our episode. <laughs> this is sweet. Um, but yeah, so I still have all of that stuff. I just didn't make it. My mom did. So it's really special because my mom, my son was born on my mom's birthday. So mm. that's really cool that they share that. And I love that she, she got to make something for her, her only grandchild, you know, um, and, and like she used to do for my brother and I, so she got to revisit doing some of that stuff again, mm -hmm. which is really cool. So I still have all of it. Mm -hmm. I'll never get rid of it. I could never. <laughs> no, can't. So maybe now, one day he I... will pass it on, right? That's the hope, right? Let's, He'll yeah. pass on. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. or your, if, if he doesn't, your, your daughter may use it for her children. So yes. you tell them a little bit about where you live, your family, all of that. And I'll, and I'll do the same. Okay. Um, I live in Canada, um, Southern Ontario. So near Niagara Falls. This and, is an international operation. y'all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have a husband, um, we've been together for 19 years, married 12, which is really a long time. That's um, amazing. I know. Congratulations on that. That's really awesome. 20 years next year. No, 20 years soon. Soon. I don't know when. Um, and then we have two beautiful children. Jack is eight and Bianca is 10. And, um, and I have a beautiful Australian shepherd. You might, uh, you might see him in my social media because he always, he's our newest puppy. Um, he's so cute. Yeah. I just kind of work on my YouTube stuff in yeah. Canada, working with all the Canadian stuff, which we don't have access to as much as, our neighbors in the south but um <laughs> we make it work somehow you know yeah, i used to be able do. to go and over to joanne's all the time but because i am right by the border but um restrictions kind of put a halt yeah to that. things things have <clears throat> kind of changed in the last couple of years and i'm kind of excited that we're we're seeing we're going to see things on this podcast from two different perspectives because you know a lot of people i feel like maybe it's just from the u.s looking north that we don't really realize all the differences that are mm -hmm. there are between the U.S. and Canada. And, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of it shows with what we've talked about just on our own with um, access to materials and, and the ability to get things that you want to work with and, and the access to different types of machines. And so I think a lot of that will come to light as we continue with this podcast and our mm -hmm. episodes and, and not just talking with each other, but with our guests that we're going to have on. We're going to have guests from both countries join us throughout this venture here. And so I think it'll kind of enlighten everybody mm -hmm. to see some differences from one country to the other uh, yeah. when it comes and to my, sewing. And my perspective with sewing has always been to try to find the cheapest way to make things. And that's just mm -hmm. because here, like if you're going to go over to fabric land, like you're going to buy fabric that's about $30 a meter. And wow. that's like, if you wanted to make a beautiful quilt for somebody, I mean, how many meters would you need? Yeah. And then not only that, but it's going to cost you $200 to get the batting. And then, wow. you need to, oh, it's absolutely. So to buy or to make your own, as opposed to just going and buying a quilt from Walmart, I mean, mm -hmm. it could be four or $500. Yes, wow. it'll meet, mean more, but I mean... It would cost a wow, lot. Wow, right? Like people can't afford to do this kind of hobby in Canada. So I try yeah. to, you know, I try to give tips and tricks on how to how to be able to secure fabric for cheaper just because I'm so used to having to spend so much money. And I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't. I always frequent the thrift shops and, and I'm always on the hunt for a bargain. <laughs> I'm a bargain shopper myself. I love yeah. a discount. Um, so a little bit about 
uh, me and my family. So I, like I mentioned, have a son that's 16. His name is Brock. Um, I have a fiance. His name is Brett. And I have all two the dogs. We're all the bees. Bethany, <laughs> Brett, Brock. And then I have two dogs, Biscuit and Gus. Oh. But we call Gus Bear Bear most of the time because he's like a teddy bear. And so um, I actually started a bandana business named After Biscuit. So it's Biscuit Bell Boutique, which we'll link. Um, and I started that three years ago, just making snap-on reversible bandanas for my dogs because I wanted something different than the tie-on or the over-the-collar. And it just, all my dog mom friends at the dog park that we used to go to every weekend um, would be like, oh, I want one for my dog. And then just kind of, and then they encouraged me to start an Etsy shop. And then three years later, we're still doing it. Biscuit models a lot. I've got a ton of dog models on Instagram. It's so much fun. And it really got me back into sewing, uh, which I really needed a hobby at the time. And I just jumped in head first and it has just taken off. And then I moved from Orlando where I was living at the time back home to Nashville where I live uh, just outside of Nashville. And uh, this is home. And so we're excited to be back here. We kind of moved back right when the pandemic started. It's a little chaotic, but it's where we were supposed to be. We were mm -hmm. we needed to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything since we moved back has just been easy and fallen into place um, like they should have been. I mean, there were challenges, but it just one door opening after the, after the other. And it just that was just affirmation that this is where we were. We needed to be. And uh, we're excited to be back home. Nice. Uh, it, it just feels good. I just never thought I would move back home. I just oh, um, really? after living here for so long and then for 30 years and then I leave and go to Orlando, Florida for six years and then just was so ready to be back. <laughs> I love Orlando. I love Florida and I miss my friends down there, but, um, you know, this is, you just, you just, just the right time for us to make that change again. And, um, so we're here and we love it and we're, I'm really excited about seasons. I mean, I really missed <laughs> out on seasons changing cause it's always hot down there. I'll tell you about um, seasons. <laughs> you've got some major seasons. I have mild seasons. Florida has no seasons. <laughs> so, um, we're getting yeah, ready no, to put up a ice rink frame soon. So we're wow. hoping that, yeah, we're hoping to have ice rink like this year for the kids. Like in their, in my in backyard. Your, your backyard? <laughs> yeah. Girl, <laughs> we don't get that cold here. <laughs> yeah, well, January and February are the the um, the tundra months. So that's when they, it usually is, because uh, it's pretty much wet and rainy and cold from November to mm -hmm. December. And then January and February are the frigid months that could actually, like, hold a, you know, a frozen, frozen ice rink. <laughs> So That's crazy. it's going to be interesting, but the kids will love it. So I'm super excited. I've, I, I wouldn't even know what to do with that. We, <laughs> we can't handle, if it just is a chance of snow here, the schools are going to close and then it usually doesn't oh, snow. Um, or if it gets too cold for like a couple of days, they'll shut down school because they don't want kids out at the wow. bus stop because we're just not prepared for it. You know, we don't have the winter wear you know, readily available, like you guys do, we get a couple of days below freezing and that's about it. Um, mm -hmm. we may get like last year, we had a week where it snowed quite a bit and then we kind of got all of our snow in one week. Um, and, and it just, we don't have the resources here to clear streets. We yeah. don't plow, we mm -hmm. don't shovel, we don't have snow and we don't or either, any of that stuff. actually, which is amazing. Last year we got snowed in and we were stuck in our house for two days. So isn't that funny? We were stuck in our house for a week. My husband couldn't leave, but I mean, we, we should be set up for that, but the city dropped the ball that, that week. <laughs> that so week. that was really bad. Yeah. We, we needed we our first kind of... responders to get to work, you know? Yeah. And your husband is one. So, mm -hmm. um, all right. So I think we should, now that you guys kind of know a little bit about who we are as people and our backgrounds of sewing <laughs> and our families, and you'll learn more about us, I oh, yeah. promise, over uh, the <laughs> course of this uh podcast but i have some questions we, we oh. have some questions we're gonna ask each other and we're both gonna answer the questions but um i think we should just kind of pick these at random um let's i'm gonna go first with the question what is one craft supply you can't live without well i mean i'll let you go first 
of course it's got to be a sewing machine and it really has <laughs> nothing to do with the fact that i love sewing but it really has everything to do with that i feel like it should be like an appliance that like like a blender like everyone should yeah. have a sewing machine and just yeah. know how to do a basic stitch because yeah i mean just fixing clothes you know what i mean you bust out your crotch yep. or something like that like <laughs> i feel like that i don't even know if that's taught in schools anymore you it's know because when when i was in high school we did home ec Mm -hmm. And now I don't, I don't even know because I know things have changed so much, but totally 100% everyone should have a sewing machine. Yeah. Even just for basic mending, I totally agree with that. Mm -hmm. I think mine would be like a really, really good pair of scissors. Like the one that no one else in the family is allowed to touch. <laughs> the one that has you know, a like lock on it. The fabric <laughs> scissors, you know, mm -hmm. um, I saw a funny meme the other day about that. It was like, um, you know, telling the guy, like, it says right here, you using her fabric scissors to cut paper <laughs> is grounds for divorce. Like, it's a big <laughs> deal. <laughs> and uh, it was just funny. But it's true. Like, we, I love my fabric <clears throat> scissors. I have a couple of pairs. I have a really nice, expensive pair that I never use because it's kind of heavy. Mm. Um, but I feel like a really good pair of scissors whether it's just your favorite pair to cut fabric, your favorite pair to cut paper, mm -hmm. whatever it is. I also have some electric scissors that are pretty fantastic. All right. Yeah, you I've put a question that. on the list and I'll let you, well, I'll answer and then you can. Okay. What's your biggest crafting pet peeve? <laughs> Ooh, I know this one. <laughs> I, I think for me personally, the one thing that irritates me the most is when my craft room is like overwhelmingly a disaster <laughs> and it literally halts all creativity to the oh. point where I don't even want to be in my favorite place in my home. <laughs> and, and I will either come to a point where I have to clean it mm -hmm. or I can't be in there. Nope. And everything I need to do, all my crafting and sewing and whatever doesn't get done and then it weighs on me. So I usually get to a breaking point where I, I no matter what has to get done, I have to stop everything. I turn mm -hmm. on some music, I jam out and I just knock it out. Like I'm like, don't nobody talk to me. Give me an hour and this place will look amazing. Yeah. Because for me, organization is so important. And I have so many different crafts that I do that my craft room is like an array of stuff. It's not just sewing. Yeah. And so everything has its place. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, if I don't take the time to clean up my project before I start another one, it builds up. And I never do because I'm always working on 10 different things for bandanas for my business, projects for work, tutorials for Craft with Bethany. Like I'm always juggling between all of these different things that I do. So there's mm -hmm. always stuff out, mm -hmm. but it needs to be, I have it now down to kind of like a system where there's an area where I can put stuff when I need to stop and move on to something else and then I can come back to it. Um, but before I wasn't, I didn't have that and it drove me nuts. And I still, <laughs> right now there is a pile of stuff in that craft room on the counter that is giving me anxiety. And I either do two things. I either <clears throat> clean it up, which I haven't yet, or I keep adding to the pile, mm -hmm. which is what's been happening. And it is like a mountain <laughs> of stuff. It's patterns and fabric and work projects and printed stuff and boxes of shipments that I haven't even opened. It's a mess. But it's organized so, okay. chaos. Sort of. I know what's <laughs> I know what's in the pile. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but what what, what really layer it's on is another question. <laughs> and then I get to the bottom and I'm like, I completely forgot about that. You know? Oh, yes, um, yes, yes. Oh that's the UFO. Shoot. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. <laughs> So it just, it sucks because it, it, this pile always builds in the same spot in my craft room, which is the only open counter space I have besides my cutting table, which I try mm -hmm. not to make cluttered because yeah. that's my working table. Yeah, and try. So this, this, this countertop area is between like my computer printer and stuff and my sewing machines. And it's where if I use like one of my Cricut machines or my Starcraft, you know, solo or any of that stuff, I... I don't leave those out on the counter because they take up so much space. So I have them on shelves, but that's where they would go to use them in that counter space because all the plugs are right there. Mm. And so in order for me to use one of those machines, I have to clear off this whole space. And it makes me, 
it just adds another layer of something I have to do. Yeah. <laughs> and it makes that quick craft yeah. take twice as long. That's my right. biggest pet peeve is when my mess slows down my crafting. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it in a nutshell. So That's what is it. your biggest All pet All that. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you have been following me on um, my tutorials over the years, you will know that I have a severe hatred for bias tape. And it's not like the cute bias tape that like, Oh, it's just like decorative on the side. I mean, just like laziness where people are like, I'm not going to make this inside out and flip it. I'm going to put bias tape. And then they don't even finish the edge of the bias tape. (laughs) (laughs) How do I really feel? (laughs) Clearly, this is a passionate topic for you. Yeah. uh, Yeah. Um, I just want to make everything inside out. Like, that's what everything that I make, I try to make it so that it can be flipped, you know, like, yeah. and if I don't, it's because there's just no way. And it's very rare though, because I will move mountains just not <laughs> to have to use bias tape. I love bias tape and quilting and all that stuff like that. But yeah. when it comes to like zipper pouches and stuff like that, like, come on, like nobody likes it. I just, that. my thought is like, I'm not going to reverse it. It's the inside and no mm-hmm. one's going to see it, but me. Mm-hmm. So I don't really care. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't. I'll judge myself when I open my zipper puck. I'll be like, "Oh yeah, that's because I'm lazy." So you know, <laughs> I if I see it, that's the worst judge. I yeah, <laughs> so dumb. I am my harshest so critic dumb. sometimes. Yeah. Um, but I love like a quick project. I love the satisfaction of getting something start to finish done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and- me too. Me too. And, and that's that why, is I'm not, why that's why I, I like to stick to the little projects. Yeah. Because I need that kind of, that quick satisfaction, you know? Well, that's why I like garment sewing. I can, mm-hmm. I can cut it out and make it in, in two and hours. It's done. Yep. Done. Yeah, I love that. I have a cute top. Of course, I'm not wearing anything. I thought, you know, I thought I was going to really plan out like a cute outfit, try to wear something I've made. This is an Ellie every Mac podcast. Again. See? So yeah. the Chapman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love the Chapman cardigan. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought I was going to like really be intentional with my outfits. And you are. What are you talking costume. about? Look at where, you, where did you go? Oh, y'all. <laughs> We're going to go for a second. Bring um, it back I'm, to our, our, our upbringings. <laughs> all right. Let me just say, um, at, from here on out, I'll be wearing something. I like. <laughs> okay. But last night I went to the best concert. <laughs> It's my third time to see them in concert in 25 years. Wow. And I am a hardcore Backstreet Boys fan. So those who are listening, um, I am wearing a tour t-shirt from the concert last night. I just had to wear it. Um, Backstreet Boys is my life uh, when it comes to music. It's just it's just what got me into music so much at a young age. They were my first arena concert at 15 years old. I Aww. saw them a few years ago in 2019 when they came out with the DNA tour. And then I saw the DNA tour again last night in Nashville and it was phenomenal. Of course, again, I'm surprised I have a voice today. I told Ashley when I woke up this morning, I felt like I got run over because just <laughs> I'm at an age where I can't stay up late mm-hmm. and jump up and down and sing and dance the entire time. Yeah. And I did, and I'm paying for it today. <laughs> My body hurts. Um, I haven't done that much cardio in a, in a long time. <laughs> But it was so, so good. So that's why I'm repping the Factory Boys shirt today. Moving forward, I will be wearing garments that I made um, because I really love garment sewing. All right. Next question. Uh, let's try this one. Uh, have you ever had an epic crafting fail and what did you learn from it? No, this is a hard I've one. never had a fail. I've been perfect what? my entire career. Oh, of course. <laughs> of course. I'm going to call BS on that. <laughs> I don't like, okay, this is me having a fail moment. Garbage. Bye. Don't <laughs> think about it ever again. I'm done because I don't invest too much time in that. I just take it like, okay, that was, that's how that went. And that's not, you don't get hung up on it. <clears throat> no, 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 no. I can't. It's just, you're uh, like, this didn't work. So I'm going to scratch yeah. this and come mm-hmm. at it with a new approach yep. and start over. Mm-hmm. Um, I, for me, um, I think we all have crafting fails and sewing fails. 
there was a I, and one thing I've learned about myself. I'm I'm not a morning person. I have a crafty job that starts and that starts at eight a.m. So that's when I usually kind of do like ease into my crafting, and and it takes a little while for me to get my crafting juices flowing to start making stuff or working on projects or creating new tutorials for work. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that bleeds over into me staying up and doing my own sewing and crafting and tutorials later in the evening. And that's when my night owl juices are just flowing and I'm just like so creative, but there is a point when it shifts from PM to AM <laughs> that I no longer am really functioning. Yeah, cognitively. Right. And I yeah. tend to make a ton of mistakes at one or two in the morning. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. not too long ago, I was sewing um, a pa sewing a garment. Um, it's the fall in love sweater pattern mm -hmm, from LAMAC, mm -hmm. which is a really cute one. It's very versatile. I love it. I've made a lot of things with it. And I was making it out of this beautiful leopard print faux cashmere fabric from Olga's Closet. It's so soft. And it's one of my favorite sweaters I made last year. And I get to the end and I'm like documenting the whole process and the stories of my Instagram, because sometimes I'll do that with projects. So people can follow along the creation of this <laughs> garment. And I get to the end and the last step is to sew on the waistband uh, that goes around the bottom of the sweater to kind of hug it into your hips. And I put it on and I get all done and I think I'm finished and I lay it down on my table and I look at it and I realize the side seams were centered from the front and the back, not to the sides. Oh, so my no. seam from my waistband was oh, in the center front. No! <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. Was, I just made that pattern too. And I, I, yeah, because the back the of the seam, do. right? The seam in the back, yeah. you lined it up with yeah. that one. I almost did that. That, yeah. But, but I didn't line it up with the back one. I lined it up with the front one. Mm. And there was no front seam. It just was dead center in the front. And I was right. like, I just sewed this on backwards. And then I realized I didn't sew it on backwards. I sewed it like I should have sewn it to the side seams. Anyway, yes, yes, yes. it was 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and I knew I was so tired. I was like, I thought I was done. You get to that point where like, yes, yeah. I go to bed. I feel accomplished. And then you see that. And I'm like, do I do I take it apart now and fix it? Or do I just go to bed? And then I was like, who am I kidding? There's no way I'm going to sleep thinking <laughs> that this, knowing that this is sitting in here messed up. <laughs> so I decided to seam rip the entire waistband out, which oh seam ripping a surged seam yeah. is so it's hard. It takes it is, yeah. forever. Mm -hmm. And I seam ripped the whole thing. And I sewed threads. it all back on oh my God, the and threads. then those threads everywhere mm -hmm. and uh, I got it back on the right way. And I, it's my favorite sweater, but that was my, my lesson. And I think one thing that I learned from it is there's a cutoff point for my, like you said, cognitive function at, yeah. when it's just from PM to AM. So yeah. now I'm a little more conscious of, okay, if I, sometimes I don't get my juices flowing for creating something for me or get time to create something for me until nine or 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And I have to go, okay. Can I realistically finish this tonight? Because I like to get from start to finish in one session. Mm -hmm. If not, am I okay with stopping mm -hmm. mid midway? And because I have to kind of give myself a cutoff of, okay, it's midnight, it's 1230, it's time to shut her down. And I force myself to go to sleep because I still have to get up the next morning and yeah, do my job, you know? So I think for me, it's just knowing <laughs> when to walk away. And I have kind of learned that, but it's really hard. I will pull an all-nighter <laughs> crafting. I no problem doing that. All right, pick a question. We'll do a few more. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what's your most favorite project you've ever made? Oh, uh, this one. Okay, I know this one. Um, it's not the most challenging project or most impressive project I've ever done, but. Um, it's the most meaningful project I've ever made. Um, I sewed, I think it was the slow Sunday or one of the, one of the dresses, it's more like a t-shirt dress, um, for my mom. Um, it was wow. a t-shirt dress, I think from Elia Mac and I made it for her with like three quarter length sleeves and she picked out the fabric. We picked out the pattern and I made it for her. Hmm. And that was significant because she made all of my clothes growing up. So it's kind of full circle. I made mm -hmm. something for her and it was her Easter dress. And then <laughs> I made her Easter dress and my Easter dress on the Saturday before Easter church and her <laughs> Easter Sunday. And we, 
I've somehow pulled them both off and it was, they were really cute. We got a lot of compliments at church on, on the dresses. And I know it means a lot to her that I I made something for her to wear. And I I look forward to making her some more stuff. I know she wants um, a Chapman cardigan for sure. Like what you're wearing, which I Mm -hmm. have several of. So what is your favorite project? I pretty much mentioned it earlier because uh, you know, just making the things for my kids and their nursery yeah. and things like that. But I do make a lot of wallets and purses and things. So I have mm-hmm. made, um, I made some, some, uh, wallets and given them to my mom as well. And she really loves them and brags about them and shows them to everyone. And then people ask me to buy or to make it for them <laughs> as well. Um, <clears throat> it's but, nice uh, that like our moms are very supportive and proud of like what we do. Totally. And I know my mom talks about my sewing and working with Singer and all of that to all of her sewing friends. So that's mm-hmm. really cool. I will say the backpacks that you made for your kids for school this year blew me away. Uh, yeah. So impressive. I don't know that that's a project I would just tackle like you did and you just knocked them out and you were so thoughtful about the materials you used and the approach and techniques. And I was really impressed by that. Like, that really made me go, <laughs> well, this girl. Pattern. But that, that is a pattern yeah. that I am working on and I will be releasing. Um, yeah. So definitely follow me and on uh, Instagram. It's a it's like a kid's backpack, like one you would buy. But it's a full-size backpack for school. Totally, and yeah. it, is, it is planned and thought out and mm-hmm. built and structured in a way to support all the books and all the mm-hmm. stuff and and comfort I did, too and just like yeah. breathability and nice and cool on their backs and easy yeah. to carry and yeah i wouldn't have even known what materials to start with for doing something like that so that really impressed me mm-hmm. all right i will pick a question um let's see here tell us about your dream craft room oh. Well, um, the room that I'm in right now actually has three doorways. So if I could just have <laughs> one door, doorway, I, I would be... One way in, one way oh out. Oh, my God. Wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> and I know that, Bethany, her room is very similar. So just, it like, is. Just like one I get room. It. And all the rest are just walls to put tables or Kalax or whatever. But I also yeah. would love to have like more tables. And if every table could have the capability of raising up and down, because those tables are so expensive. So if I ever they got are. one, I would only be able to buy one. But to just have every table just have the option of being able to stand or sit wouldn't be. And of course, Kalax with drawers. That's that's what I need. <laughs> that's all I need. I just need storage and I want it to look pretty. And yeah. Uh, yeah. That would be my dream. And more room, please. I need my table. It's never enough. (laughs) My table's not in the center of my room. And if you have that luxury of being able to walk all the way around your cutting table, don't take it for granted because people like us have our cutting table stuck in the corner. It's not fun. (laughs) (laughs) I think for me, like, it's kind of hard. I, my dream craft room is kind of what my craft room is. Like, it's something that I always wanted. Yeah. Um, I, like you, have a, a back door that comes into it. I have a door that goes into the kitchen, and then I have a door that goes into the laundry room. I have three ways for people to come walking through my craft room. So it <laughs> yes. does drive me nuts sometimes. The well, laundry but, baskets have to go through, and you know. Yes. Yeah. But it, it's so, for, my, for me, mine is um, like a, when we bought this house, it was already it was previously originally a garage, a one car garage with the laundry room in the back end. And Mm. the previous owners had converted it to not be in a garage anymore, like an interior room. They had closed off the garage door. There's not a garage door anymore, but there's still a back door that goes out that was there before. Mm -hmm. And then you would take three steps up into the house, into the kitchen. So I have that is why, Um, but I really do like my space. It's very well lit. I've got several windows. Like I do love that. Um, yeah. I definitely wish it had a closet because I don't have a closet. The The room going into the laundry room is an extension of the craft room. There's like shelving and cabinets and all of that in there. And I store other craft supplies in there. My fiance does like a lot of his epoxy pours for woodworking in there. We have 3D printer in there. We have all that kind of stuff. My heat press is in there, uh, but it's also my laundry room. So it's not cute. Mm-hmm. And so that door stays shut a lot. So I really only have the ability to store stuff for my craft room in my craft room, 
I did convert our guest room into my studio here. Like this corner is the studio. Mm -hmm. It's also this side of the room is like shelving with like, I have about a dozen singer sewing machines here for work. So I had to have a place to put them all. So they're on shelves. I have like a whole four shelves over here full of huge containers of fabric that I sew with, that I store. I, I definitely have figured out a way to, to keep my space organized. You don't have a I basement, do, have a, do you? No, I don't. That's so weird to me. Like, <laughs> so weird. Like everyone has well, a basement around here. That's crazy. A lot of houses here in our neighborhood do have basements, but okay. our house is on the flattest spot. So any house that's not on a sloped lot is going to probably not have a basement. If it's on a sloped lot, it's going to have a basement. Mm. Um, so I don't have a basement. Um, most of my neighbors do. Uh, hmm. So I'm kind of like the oddball out, uh -huh. but that's okay. We, you know, one day maybe <clears throat> I've, I grew up with basements, having houses. Oh, okay. with basements, so I do kind of uh, miss that. I think it would be nice for Brett to be able to have a basement to work in and have more of a shop here. But mm -hmm. we're looking at building that in the future out back. I told him, I was like, we need like his and hers, like sheds in the back that are like <laughs> an extension of what we like. He needs a wood shop yeah, in our backyard. So we're going to like build a big wood shop. She shed, he but shed. I, he, <laughs> yes. He said, he shed. I can't say that, but um, we need that. But for both of us, because I would love to have a space. I think my ultimate dream when it comes to like, like, yeah, I love my craft room. I've gotten it to really function well for me, mm -hmm. but if I have anybody over, it's really crowded. Mm -hmm. It's a small yeah. space. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I have the big cutting table in the middle that I, it's on wheels, I can move it around. So I can walk around the whole thing and everything. But, um, I, I would love a place or a space where I can invite people over to teach sewing yeah. or crafts mm -hmm. or all of that. And, and I think if I had a shed like space, then I could do that there. Totally. Yeah. And I think that would be like the only way I would really want to extend beyond what I already have. Yeah. Because I really, I, I love sewing by myself. It's very therapeutic. Mm -hmm. I really like sharing it with someone else. Mm -hmm. Even if someone comes over and they sit and they sew and I'm working on something else yeah. and we're just in the same room together, sewing together. Like it's just mm -hmm. so much more enjoyable for me mm -hmm. to, to have that. Well, such a solid, solitary kind of yeah. craft. It can so be. It's, you know, you alone a lot of times. Yeah. So to be able to share it with somebody. And like you said, even if they are working on their own thing, and you, that's mm -hmm. why like me and Bethany call each other while we're crafting. I mean, like, yeah, we right? got on a video call one day and we were both sewing and we were chatting and I was like, she was like, can I just, can we just video call? I was yeah. like, okay. <laughs> so I had my phone set up on like a tripod and I'm over here cutting fabric. She's over there sewing on stuff and we're just chit chatting and hanging out. Like as if we were so in the two same Two hours went by and I'm like, holy, <laughs> we were realize on it. there for a while. <laughs> talking about everything, not just mm -hmm. sewing, life and everything. It was really fun to just not have the TV on in the background. Yeah. The show I'm not really paying attention to. I got to have some noise. Yeah. So, um, all right. I, let's see here. Did I, I gave you that question? You pick one. Okay. Um, what do you do other than crafting? <laughs> I craft. <laughs> I buy fabric. <laughs> I, buy, I do other crafts. <laughs> Um, oh my gosh, this is hard. I mean, I, you know, I have the bandana business. Yeah. So, um, in the fall, I do a lot of vendor events here locally. I have about five oh. lined up for this fall and they start at the end of this month. That's so that, I have that's one that, um, too much stuff on, on your plate thing again, isn't it? It's it is, moment. but I really love moment. it because it gives, gives me an opportunity <clears throat> to get in front of our customers, like my customers for the bandana business. It reminds mm -hmm. me, like gives me the energy to remind why I put so much time and effort and energy into yeah. it. Um, getting to see all the puppy dogs and dress them up is always really nice because I'm obsessed with my dogs. And, the, you know, honestly, we we don't really watch a lot of TV in our house. We just don't have time. If I'm not in my sewing room or craft room, my fiance is at the shop working on stuff, you know. And, and outside of those things, when we come together and spend time together, it's usually on something, another project 
around the house like we're about mm -hmm. to paint our house so mm -hmm. we're yeah, like working yeah. on picking out paint colors and all of that and my son's into like all sorts of stuff that so we we hang out with him we do like watching movies mm -hmm. so my son and i are big fans of like harry potter and marvel movies those are our two kind of like genres that we really like to watch together Aww. so we've yeah <laughs> so that's what we do kind of outside of it's just spending time with my family because we yeah. do so many things individually that like that's when we come together we love doing bonfires in our backyard with like a big fire pit oh, yeah. and we love doing all of that and the dogs even have their own chairs so they sit out by the fire with us <laughs> and we're that family and we sit out there for hours in the evenings and it's our time to kind of get outside of the house get some fresh air spend some time together you know, we, we listen to music or we just chit chat and talk mm -hmm. about the next project or whatever, but yeah, it's really nice. We'll do it like a little weenie roast and some s'mores and it's really nice. fun. And we, we are getting to the point where we can start enjoying having fires again outside because it's so hot in the summer. So yeah. We obviously mm -hmm. couldn't do it, but in the evenings, it's starting to get cool enough to where we're going to start doing them again. Mm -hmm. And, um, it'll be 30 degrees out there sometimes and we're bundled up and we're just sitting out by the fire having the best time. Yeah. Uh, we'll be out there till 11 or 12 o'clock just hanging out. We'll have it's the really fire fun. going next to the ice rink. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. So what about you? Uh, well, yeah, that's, I, I spend a lot of my time with my dog because he's mm -hmm. a ball fiend um, <laughs> so during the day when the kids are at school it's i'm in here i'm outside playing ball so i have to go back and forth because i have to make sure that he like right now he's passed out because we just went and played ball um, yeah so he's, he's still a puppy though he's still yeah. young he's got, he's all got that a energy. lot of energy <laughs> but he's just obsessed with it and uh so he but i love it i knew i knew when i got an australian shepherd that he would be a high energy dog so yeah, uh, I invest a lot of are. my time in him. And then, of course, you know, with the kids mm -hmm. all the time outside yeah. with the kids playing and yeah. you know, going to the park and, you know, just trying to find things to do around here also that we're able to yeah. do. Yeah. We just went on a trip to Montreal and Quebec City yeah. and um, just kind of took a little road trip, yeah. you know, get out of the house and see some things. We did a beach trip, the three of us, um, earlier this month, and my son does school virtually, so it allows us to, That's awesome. to kind of go whenever, mm -hmm. and so he was able to still do schoolwork and tune into his classes and everything, um, and so that was good. We got to spend a few days at the beach, um, yeah. which was nice. So. Yeah, my kids just All went right. back to school on Monday, so... Yeah, I might have been back for months. So. That's crazy. That's crazy. Again, another thing that's very different. Another thing about, that's different. Yeah, about Canada. Yeah. Well, <sighs> let's let's wrap up with one more question. Okay. Um, I think this is a good one that I think people will uh, probably want to know the answer to. What is your best advice for new makers, whether they're sewists or crafters or whatever? What is your best advice for new makers? Um. 100% um, that nobody's perfect. Uh, right. Like when I, I show my projects, I probably have three or four attempts behind me mm -hmm. that no one gets to see. But then you see this beautiful thing. It's, it's almost as if I just made it, but no, yeah. no, 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 no. Like as, <laughs> I've been sewing for 30 years and every mm -hmm. time I do a new project, um, it's the first time I've done that project and I need to just figure it out as I go. So like, you know, some people look at things and they think, wow, I could never make it like you can, but it's like, you mm -hmm. totally can. Cause yeah. you didn't see the, I mean, maybe I should start showing that stuff. I you don't were, know. You should. I think it's, I think it would make people feel like real, it, <laughs> more uh, obtainable mm -hmm. that they could do it because it, if, if you made mistakes, it's okay for them to make mistakes. Yeah, because they wouldn't. They it it makes it acceptable. Too. Yeah, it takes mm -hmm. the pressure off. Yeah, you know, I like I shared when I was talking about the fail I had with the sweater. Like I was like, man, but I posted about it. I kind of made fun of myself on the stories. Like, look at what I did. This is why <laughs> I don't sew at two o'clock in the morning. Like, here I am. Yeah, I'm gonna fix it, and, and everyone did, can and relate it, to that, right? Like everybody, absolutely. Can. Keep it real. Yeah, totally. 
I think my best advice for new makers is to not compare yourself to like say us or someone else that you're watching like on YouTube or tutorial who's like you said, seems to knock these projects out and they always look perfect and whatever. Like I, I have a lot of years of experience and so mm -hmm. do you. And, and for someone who's new, you can't compare yourself to someone who's been doing this for a long time. And I know I get this all the time. You make it look so easy. You make it look so easy. And it, for me, it is because mm -hmm. I've been doing it for so long and I have a yeah. ton of practice and experience with it. Um, but I have to remind myself that while it's easy for me, it's not easy for everybody because they're at a different stage of learning to sew or learning to do other crafts. And mm -hmm. I have to really, I think that's what helps me keep that perspective of when I do my tutorials, like really breaking it down, taking yeah. the time to explain why I do. So some of my tutorials are a little longer. And, and if it's a craft or a project you've done before and you're just watching along, you can kind of speed through it. But for someone who's never picked up that sewing machine before yeah. or craft before, they know that they're going to get a very thorough tutorial from me because I'm mm. going to talk about my best tips and tricks, why I do them. Mm -hmm. I don't just say, well, this is how I do it. I'm going to give you a reason why, because I've tried all these other reasons and ways and it didn't work. So this is how I came to this point and, um, you know, help them have a successful project and be positive and encouraging, but it's okay to make mistakes. And like I said before, you need to know when to take a break and walk away before you mm -hmm. get discouraged to the point where you don't want to ever do it again. Like yeah. don't get to that point. Totally. I and all just, the time put things down. Yeah. Just, I need to walk away, make some space and then come back with a, new perspective or yes. just like fresh. a fresh yeah yep and, <clears throat> and but i think the key part of that is coming back to it like mm -hmm. don't just like walk away from it and give up mm -hmm. like i have a project i actually put it back into the fabric bin it's the only time i've ever done that and i honestly think it's un it's probably to the point where I can't fix it and I would have to start all over mm. and I'm really discouraged by it. And I just want to like not deal with it, but I keep thinking about that dress and how I really wanted to make it. And I never finished it. And I feel bad about it personally. Like I feel like I let myself down. Mm. Um, and so I really want to pick it back up, but I probably won't for a while. <laughs> uh, to be honest, because I got so many other things okay. to do. That's okay. It was just a personal sew, but you know, yeah. just don't let it stop you from moving forward. No, I, that's the other thing is that like you could put it down and then just like get discouraged with the whole yeah. craft itself. And I did. each piece is its own entity. You can't say that I didn't make this sewing pouch correctly. So that means I can't sew. Well, you yeah, know, no. sometimes it's hard yeah. to work with zippers and you need to <laughs> make 500 pouches before you're like, okay, I feel comfortable with zippers now. And I actually yeah. was kind of afraid of zippers for a very long time. It was very intimidating. And even like yeah. there's so many things that I'm still very intimidated by after mm -hmm. 30 years, but you know, you just got to kind of take a leap of faith and try things. And, I've got uh, to the point where I, I actually practice. seek out those challenges that scare me or that I'm insecure mm -hmm, about too. or not as familiar with because I get bored with doing like the simple stuff because mm -hmm, yeah. it gets a little monotonous after a while. Mm -hmm. um, like sewing dog bandanas, it's like the same shape over and over yeah. again. Oh, totally. And so I want to do maybe a little ruching or a little gathering or whatever. Yeah, you know? I want to do something different um, and change it up. So mm -hmm. I think it's, good to try new things, but don't, I think you also need to be realistic, especially for sewists. Like I have a lot of people who follow me on social media and they want to get back into sewing or they want to start sewing, but they see me sewing garments. Mm -hmm. I'm sewing garments on a serger and cover stitch machine that are knit fabrics. Mm -hmm. I would never sew that same t-shirt, knit t-shirt on a regular sewing machine. Oh gosh. Can no, you, can you? Yes. But is that a great starting project for someone learning to sew? Absolutely not. And it's hard for me to say to people like who want to get into sewing, I want to encourage that and they want to make their own clothes, but I know they're not ready for a serger, mm -hmm. but I don't want to discourage them from pursuing the craft that they want. Like there's this fine balance of like 
the sewing machine's going to eat your fabric if you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Sewing knit fabric on a sewing machine. So it's best to start with wovens, right? And get comfortable with sewing basic things and small projects and yeah, you know, things like that. And stuff. <laughs> yeah, like just get in there and but work with an easier material. Yeah. Like a woven that doesn't stretch. And people don't realize that stretchy material is really hard to sew and it's really hard to sew. And so curly, on, like double brush poly. Regular it's like, ugh, yeah. It's beautiful, it's, but it's just such a pain sometimes. <laughs> it is. And mm -hmm. um, I actually love making garments on my serger and cover stitch machine. Me too. The, they, they just make it so much easier, but that is not a, that is not a beginner <laughs> machine. So... <laughs> It's, it's weird. It's hard to, you know, have those conversations with people who want to get into it and see yeah. garments. And like, you have to in, realize right? I'm not sewing, I'm not sewing <laughs> garments on my, you know, so yeah. regular home sewing machine. I'm using a serger and cover stitch and, and that's a whole different ball game. And, you know, I, I say, okay, well, if you really want to learn to sew, here are some projects I've done like for singer that are like beginner projects that are great for learning sewing techniques and different stitches and different, the terminologies and all the features of your machine. And so I send them a bunch of those because I'm like, start here, yeah. build up some confidence with the machine first. You can then we can so work many. into other stuff. You can make so, you many make so much stuff and with woven fabric too. Like, Oh, I know. Yeah. I have a whole bin over here of just woven fabric. So anyways, well, <laughs> We have covered a lot today. This is our first episode. We've had fun chatting. Yeah. I've learned some new things about you. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you learned some new things about yes, me. Yes, yes, totally. I want to come over for a um, bonfire, though. I got to come yeah, out of Nashville. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to talk her into it. <laughs> sure, tell um, me in the move in there. <laughs> I am. I am. I told her, I said, my dream would be to, like, one day have, like, a whole store where people could come in and shop beautiful fabrics, pick out a new machine, take a sewing class, mm -hmm. do all the things that I love to do in one place. And I think Ashley would be a great partner. In that. <laughs> oh my! Maybe God. we'll work up to that one day. Maybe. That'll be our retirement. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. One of these days. I has well, would totally be down to being like a snowbird. Yeah. Come down there, open think, the business. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah. Him yeah. and uh him and Brett can like build all the stuff and make sure that you know they can hang up all the things and yeah. do all the manly stuff for us and <laughs> we can just have fun and sew and hang out with people that want to learn to sew. I think that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. I love the face to face interaction with people. Yeah. I like to say I'm an extroverted introvert. And I think that's why sewing yeah. is a perfect craft mm -hmm. for me because I could do something like this to like express my passion for sewing. And then I can turn around and have my me time, mm -hmm. or shut the door and yeah. turn on some music and don't, or listen to an audio book or a podcast and don't like tune out the world and just recharge my batteries. So it's very therapeutic. Mm -hmm. I love the sound of my sew a show, a sewing machine. I love the sound of it. <laughs> so I don't know. It should be my ringtone. Anyways, um, <laughs> next week, our yeah. next episode, we have a special guest, which we were really excited about because this person um, is someone that we both followed on social media mm -hmm. and uh, is the reason we met. Ashley and I met through social media is because of this person sharing one of your projects. So we're going to talk about all of that next week. I'm going to kind of leave it out there as like a surprise. Yeah. We'll tease up to it uh, on our Hopefully social media. So sure. and stuff and announce Yeah. It. We're so excited. She's... Her. She does pattern making. She does garment sewing. She's a mom. She is just a fun person to watch. Very she is. Uh, positive and like I, her energetic. Her draping, too. Yeah. She's just very talented. And mm. so I'm excited to talk with her next week. So we're excited. Yeah. Um, between now and then, be sure you're following us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, because that's where we'll kind of give you guys a tease on who our special guest is next week for our second episode and our very first guest we're excited about. Yes. All right, okay. guys. Well, thank you for tuning in to the Social Hour podcast, our very first one. I hope you have learned something new about Ashley and I. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll All see right, you guys. guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Yeah. Bye.